students, welcome to the Countercy Online Mathematics Lessons. This is a self-sponsored channel that enables learners to learn and sharpen their mathematics skills at the comfort of their homes free of charge. Just before we proceed, I would advise you to click the subscription button, which is absolutely free of charge so that you don't miss even a single video that we upload daily. Uh, this is our first daily maths test that we've uploaded. All the tests comprises of five questions, where question one to four are KCSE revision questions, and question five is usually a past KCSE question. Uh, the setting of the questions comes from all forms, that's from form one to form four. Uh, as I conclude, I would advise you to first attempt the question before looking for the solution you can do that by first pausing the video then you attempt the question then afterwards you compare your working with the solution that you've suggested uh, so kindly get the tools of work that's a pen a piece of paper of course a blank one and of course a calculator if need be you can have even a pencil and a rubber and a sharpener and all the tools of work necessary to tackle the questions. Uh, we shall interact more as time goes by as we cover more tests. So get ready. If you are ready, let's go. Uh, just a brief pre-introduction of our questions. Question 1 is a form 3 question coming from the topic quadratic expressions and equations while question 2 comes from binomial expansion, question 3 comes from the topic probability, while question 4 comes from the topic SADS, and lastly, our last question uh, is a form 1 question, which appeared in KCSE year 209, paper 1, number 3, from the topic rates, ratio, proportion, and percentages. Uh, uh, without wasting even a fraction of a microsecond, we go directly to our question 1. Solve the equation 2x squared plus 3x is equal to 5 by completing the square method. That is our question 1 worth the remarks. We've got 2x squared plus 3x is equal to 5. So there are so many ways of killing a cat, including burning the house. Yeah, you can burn the house in order to kill the cat. But that would be so crazy. So even in maths, there are so many formulas that we can use to solve or rather to find the value of x, such as factorization method. Uh, you can use also the quadratic formula. You can also guess the answer and get it right. But... Once you do all those, that will all be in vain because the question is very clear and specified that you should use the completing the square method. Completing square method, sorry. Uh, so the first thing that you should always do while using the completing square method is to make sure that, that the coefficient of x squared is 1. You always do this by dividing all over by the coefficient of x squared, which is 2 for our question, we divide by 2 all over to have the coefficient of x squared as 1. So we shall have x squared plus 3 all over 2x is equal to 5 all over 2. Uh, next, we take now the middle value, which is 3 over 2. We divide it by 2. Dividing by 2, we get 3 over 4. Now we square this value and add it all over. To both sides, we add it to the left side and also to the right side. To have x squared plus 3 over 2, x plus 3 all over 4, which is a squared is equals to 5 all over 2. We still add this one to the right side to have plus 3 all over 4 squared. We do this in order to make this to in order to make the left side a quadratic equation. So we shall have this one x squared 
plus 3 all over 2x plus 3 all over 4 squared is equals to 5 all over 2 plus 3 all over 4 squared, that's 9 all over 16. So we add 5 over 2 to 9 all over 16. Once we add, we get 49 all over 16. Remember, this one is a quadratic equation which is equivalent to x plus this middle value which is divided by 2, that's 3 over 4. The whole of this is equivalent to x plus 3 over 4 squared is equals to 49 all over 16. In order to get rid of the square, we can find the square root all over. To have x plus 3 all over 4 is equals to, remember, the square root of any number is equals to plus minus the square root of that number. So the square root of 49 over 16 is equals to plus or minus, plus or minus 7 all over 4. When you've got x plus 3 all over 4 is equals to positive 7 over 4, or we can have x plus 3 all over 4 is equals to negative 7 all over 4. When you have this case, we have our x as 7 all over 4 minus 3 all over 4. While on the other case, considering uh, the square root of 49 over 16 is negative 7 over 4, we have our x as negative 7 over 4 minus 3 all over 4. For our first case, we get our x as 7 over 4 minus 3 over 4, that's 4 over 4, which is equivalent to 1. While on the other side, we have our x as negative 7 over 4 minus 3 all over 4, that's negative 5 all over 2, which is equivalent to negative 2.5. And those were the values of x using the completing square method. Now we move on with our question 2. Expand 5 plus x all over 2 to power 6 up to the term in x to power 3. Hence, use the expansion to estimate the value of 11 over 2 to power 6. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. The question is 3 marks. That's question 2, where we have 5 plus x all over 2 to power 6. We were supposed to expand this term up to the term where x is to power 3 and hence find the value of 11 over 2 to power 6. So the question of two major parts. The first one is to expand this expansion to up to the term where x is equals to power 3. Then the second part is to find the value of this. Uh, first of all, we have got this value is equivalent to 5 plus 0.5x to power 6. I've converted this all over 2 into decimal to avoid making errors. However, if you wish, you can work with it like that. But if you wish to avoid the errors, you can convert it to a decimal. Next, up to the term where x is equals to 3, we've, we've gonna have three terms of this expansion. That's we've got 5, uh, 0.5x, 5, 0.5x, 5, 0.5x, and finally the last one, 5, 0.5x. This is how we assign the powers. The first number, we assign it to the highest power, which is uh, 6. We go the same way, decreasing the powers, 6. The next one will be to power 5. The next one will be to power 4. The last one will be to power 3. Next, now we go to 0.5x. We start assigning each powers from 0. We assign it 0. Then 1, 2, 
three. I'm using different colors for you to notice well, what's happening with our numbers. In between them, we've got the plus, the plus. Then again, we use the tree diagram to find the coefficients of x that we will use for the expansion of 6. We shall take the first four values of expansion, which is 1, 6, 15, and 20. So we go ahead and multiply all this 5 to power 6 times 0 0.5 x to power 0 times 1. The also, we do the same to all the cases, then we sum up all of them. Uh, you can use a calculator to avoid errors, where we get, for the first part, we get 5 to the power 6 times 0 0.5x to the power 0. You know, this one is equivalent to 1, because anything raised to power 0 is equal to 1. So 5 to the power 6 is 15, 6 to 5, plus... Now we go to the second term, 5 to the power 5 times 6 times 0 0.5x, we get 9325x. I hope that you are following. We now go to the third term, which is this one. We multiply all the numbers to get 2343.745. Plus, now we go to the last term, 5 to the power 3 times 20 times 0 0.5x to the power 3 to get 312.5x to the power 3. Now we have satisfied our first part of the equation, which is to expand this value of the term where x is to the power 3. Now we go to the second part, we find the value of this 11 over 2. In order, in order to know the value of x for this equation, or rather this expansion, as compared to this, we take 5 plus x all over 2, we equate it to 11 all over 2, to get the value of x. Upon solving for x, we get x as 1. We solve for x using this equation, whichever method you use, I believe that you get x as 1. Now the next step is to replace 1 to our equation. In order to save time, I'll just do it right here. But you should write it in, uh, in a separate step here. So we replace by 1. Instead of writing x, x we write 1. Instead of writing x here, we write 1 squared. Instead of writing x cubed, you write times 1 to power 3. Finally, upon substituting with one here you get our value for all of this as 27 656.25 then we go back to the question to the very last part give your answer correct to one decimal place so now we go to our answer and correct it to one decimal place since this number is more or is equal to 5, we add 1 to the last decimal place to have our final answer is 27656.3. And that is the answer. And with that, you get your full 3 marks. Uh, we've got now our question 3, a probability question, uh, read as follows. A class has 18 boys and 12 girls. Three pupils are chosen at random from the class. What is the probability of choosing all girls? Uh, we've been told that that is our question three, that three girls are chosen. We've got our girl one, girl two, and the third girl. You know, what is changing is only the girls and the total students, or rather total pupils are the ones who are ch changing since the boys are not changing. Initially, the girls were 12. Once we pick our first girl, now the total of the remaining girls remain as 11. Once we pick the second girl, the total number of girls remaining 
is equals to 10. Uh, the total number of students initially they were 18 plus 12 that's 30 initially the students were 30 but once the first girl was eliminated they remained 29 after the second one was eliminated they remained 28 and the question is uh, three people are chosen at random from the class what is the probability of choosing all girls? So what we simply do is to take the fractions as they are 12 over 30. We multiply by 11 all over 29. And multiply by 10 all over 28 to get the probability of choosing all girls. Upon, mul multiplying, <coughs> upon multiplying, we get our answer as... 11 all over 2 or 3. With that, you get your 3 marks. Uh, we proceed on with our question uh, 4. Given that root 3 is equals to 1.7321 and root 5 is equals to 2.2361, find without using tables or a calculator the exact value of root 5, root 45 minus root 12 all over root 15. The question is worth 4 marks. Uh, the first thing that we do is to simplify the sides that we've been given. We well know that root 45 is equivalent to root 9 times 5. Since 9 times 5 is equal to 45, this can further be simplified to is equals to root 9 times root 5 we can simplify this further to root 9 we well know that it is 3 so we shall have as root 9 uh, the square root of root 9 that's 3 then multiplied by root 5 which is 3 root 5 uh, we now have our root 12 is equals to is equivalent to root 4 times 3 which is also equivalent to root 4 times root 3 root 4 is equals to 2 times root 3 which is 2 root 3 uh, root 15 can also be simplified to root 15 is equals to root 3 times 5 which is equals to uh, the root of 3 times the root of 5. We now replace these values to our first side, which is here. Uh, we shall have, instead of writing root 45, we write 3 root 5 minus root 12, which is 2 root 3, all over root 15, which is root 3 times root Five. Uh, we can find a way that we can get away with the denominator with these roots that are in the denominator. We can do that by multiplying by root 3 times root 5 all over root 3 times root 5. For the upper case, once we multiply this by this, we can do it manually. Once we do it manually, we get its value as 5 root 3, sorry, I mean 15 root 3 minus 6 root 5. I'm doing this in order to save time. While on the lower case, root 3 times root 5 times root 3 times root 5, this is the same as root 15 times root 15 which is equals to 15. Once you multiply this by this, you get 15. Uh, we can go ahead and simplify this. Uh, for the upper case, I think we can factor out 3 to have 5 root 3 minus 2 root 5. For the lower case, we get 
15 we divide by 3 all over divide by 3 divide by 3 to get 5 so for the upper case we remain with 5 root 3 minus 2 root 5 all over 5 this one is equivalent to 5 root 3 all over 5 minus 2 root 5 all over 5 so this 5 can get away this 5 to remain with I hope it's clear on your screen to remain with root 3 minus 2 all over 5 root 5 we now go back to our question where we were told that root 3 is equals to 1.7321 while root 5 here we have minus 2 all over 5 instead of writing now root 5 we write the value that you are told for root 5 which is 2.2361 and i believe now it is more simplified and this can be done without using a calculator or mathematical tables which upon simplifying you will get as 0 0.8376 with that you get your four marks finally we get to our question 5 uh, given that the ratio of x is to y is equals to 2 is to 3 find the ratio of 5x minus 2y is to x plus y the question is 3 marks which appeared in KCSC 209 paper 1 number 3 under the topic proportions uh, we have x is to y is equals to 2 is to 3 from this it is true to say that x all over y is equals to 2 which is this one all over 3 this sign also means all over or rather divide by uh, where you've got 2k where k is a constant uh, but the question is find the ratio of 5x minus 2y is to x plus y so we shall we shall use our x as 2k while we shall use our y as 3k so we go ahead and replace this to our expression that we have here we have 5 x is 2k minus 2 our y is 3k is to x plus y our x is 2k while our y is 3k uh, 5 times 2k that's 10k minus 6k is to 2 plus 3 that's 5k finally we have 10k minus 6k that's 4k is to 5k we can divide by k all over by k all over to simplify our ratio finally we get our ratio is 4 is to 5 with that you get your 3 marks and that marks the end of our first daily maths test i hope that you enjoyed watching if indeed you did please consider subscribing so that you don't miss any single video that we upload daily otherwise take care let's meet in our next daily maths test goodbye Thank you.